Hi, and welcome back to 10 CSS3 UI and layout projects. In this project, you're going to be creating an anything slider, but the big difference between this and almost any other slider you'll find out on the web is you won't need to use any JavaScript to create this whatsoever. So to get started, find the link for this base pen below this video, and then fork that into your CodePen account. When you look through the HTML for this base pen for your slider, you'll see that it's very similar to the HTML that you used in the CSS3 tabs project. So we have a slider class applied to our, our exterior div, and that's instead of the tabs class. And then inside that div for every slide that we want to use, we have a radio button, we have a label, and then after that, we have our content div. And we're going to use basically the same technique as we did with our tabs to switch from one slide to the next. However, there's some differences in the way we're going to be doing this because unlike the tabs, this one is not going to need to have a fixed height. The content area will adapt itself to suit whatever the height of your largest slide is. And we're also going to be handling the transition from one slide to the next in a little bit of a different way. Okay, so first up, we're going to hide our radio buttons. Just like before, we need them to be in the code, but not visible. So we'll just target the class that they're all using and set that to display none. And right now, we've got our slides stacked one on top of the other. But we want to have them all in the same area. So to do that... We're going to use a trick that you may or may not have seen before. We've set the width of our slides to 100% and then we've floated them all to the left. And then we've set a right margin of negative 100%. Now what happens if you take any full width element and you float it in one direction and give it a negative margin of 100% in the other direction, it's going to make those elements sit right on top of each other. Now, right now, the only reason there's even any gap along the top here is we still have our labels sitting up here, and that's what's pushing each one of these content divs down. But when we move those, which we will in just a second, our float left and margin right negative 100% is going to make these all take up the same amount of space. They're going to be sitting right on top of each other. And you're able to do that even though you're not using absolute positioning to make them sit on top of each other. And the reason that's important is it's this technique that allows this slider to have a flexible height. When you're using absolute positioning, an element is pulled right out of the flow of the document. But when we use this technique, our content divs stay in the flow of the document and they have a real height. And that's what is going to allow us to put anything that we want into our slides and then still have the layer of the slider work correctly. All right, now let's put some styling on the slider class that we have on the div surrounding our whole slider. So we'll add in this. So we're just setting a background and a border, and we're also setting some margins. And at the same time, we're setting overflow to hidden because a little bit later we're going to be pushing some of these slides off to the side and we want to make sure that they can't be seen when they're outside of the slider area. And then we're also setting padding bottom to 2.5 rem because we're about to take our radio button labels and convert them into little circles that will allow people to click on them to advance from one slide to the next. And we're going to pull those buttons down and run them along the bottom of the slider, which is a very common layout that you will have seen before with other sliders. Okay, so let's convert those labels into circles and move them down. And that is all of our labels right now. They're just stacked right on top of each other. So we've absolutely positioned them and put them down in the bottom left corner. We've set their Z index to five to make sure that they're gonna overlap the content that's inside the slider. We've given them a a square height and width, but set their border radius to 50%. We've set the text indent to one rem, which is the same as the width, and then set overflow to hidden. And so that means that the text inside that label can no longer be seen. We've set our background color. We've set our cursor to a pointer. So we get the little hand cursor. And then we've set a transition on this as well, so that 
in a little bit when we change the background color of the circle when that circle is connected to the active slide, we'll have a nice transition in between those two colors. Now we wanna offset the left position of each of our little circles so they're not sitting right on top of each other. Uh, you can put as much code as you need in here to account for as many slides as you might wanna put into this slider. Because with this syntax, you can easily add new slides. You can have as many slides as you want. You just need to copy the radio button, the label, and the slide content diff and paste it. And then you can have as many as you choose. Right now we've got three frames and we're gonna account for there being up to five just to give us a bit of room to move. So we'll add in this code. And what we're doing here is using the nth of type selector. So what this does is it looks for a specific instance of this class being used, depending on what number you enter in between the brackets here. So this code, we have a one in between the brackets. So this is gonna affect the first instance of slide label. And it's gonna set its left position to one rem. So that is this circle here with one rem of space on the left. Now here we've entered two in between the brackets. So this is gonna look for the second of our slide labels and set its left position to 2.5 rem. And then so on, four rem, 5.5, seven rem. And as I said, you can have as many of these accounted for as you need to. Right now we're only using three of them. So that is affecting our three circles here. Now let's put a background behind those circles that we're gonna to use to navigate between our slides so that we make sure that we clearly delineate between the navigation area of the slider and the content area of the slider. And we'll do that with an after pseudo element applied to the slider. That's our outer div for our slider. So we have given our after pseudo element a height of three rem, and that's this height here and we've given it a blue background. We also have a display setting of block, no content inside, and then we've absolutely positioned it at the bottom of our slider. We've put its left and right edges out to the very left and right sides of the slider, and we've set the Z index to one to make sure that the navigation area always overlaps anything that might come up inside the slider. So now all our layout is exactly how we want it and we're ready to start building in the actual sliding mechanism. Now, we're not gonna just fade from one slide to the next. We're actually gonna make the slides sweep in from the right. And to do that, we're going to use a keyframe animation. So here is our keyframe animation. We've named it slide. And what we're doing is at 0% of the slide animation, we're using transform to translate the slide all the way over to the right side of the slider. So translate X basically just means moving something horizontally. So we're moving it horizontally by 100% of the width of the slider. So that's gonna push it all the way out of sight. And then at 100% of the duration of the animation, we're gonna have brought that all the way back to translate X zero. So that basically means that it will not have been moved on a horizontal. So it's gonna go from all the way over to the right back to its original position. Now that our slide animation is ready for use, let's add in the switching mechanism. So this first lot of code here, we're actually using colon not to find all of the slides that are not checked, that are not selected right now. And we're then setting the opacity of those slides to zero, and we're also setting a transition on those slides. At the same time, we're setting pointer events to none because the inactive slides are still gonna be there in the background. So we have to make sure that if the active slide has a link in it has text in it, that that slide can be interacted with without being interfered with by any of the other slides that are, are still in the same area. And then with this code, we're finding which slide is currently checked 
And then we're using the animation that we just created to bring that in sliding from the right side. And with the way we've coded this up, we don't need to specifically say that we want the opacity back to one when we have an activated slide. And that's because we've used that colon not syntax. So the opacity of zero is only gonna to apply to a slide that is not selected. As soon as you select a slide, that's just by default going to set that opacity back to one. So now when we hit our circles here, there is our working slider. And you can go in any order and you're gonna have your slide coming in from the right. Now, the only thing that's missing is changing the color of the little circle to highlight which one of these circles is associated with the currently active slide. And we'll do that by using the colon checked syntax once more. And it's found the currently checked label and made that a slightly lighter blue color. And there you can see the transition on the colors as we go from one slide to the next. And you'll also notice here is our paragraph outside of the slider, just like we did with our CSS tabs, but we haven't had to set any explicit height on our slider. We are still able to have extra content below the slider and it sits where it's supposed to in the layout. And you can put any content into this slide that you want and the height of the slider will adjust automatically. So that's how you create a slider using CSS3, something that used to be impossible without using JavaScript. And we would love to see your slider pen. So when you're finished, please tweet it to us at hashtag 10 CSS3 projects. In the final project of this course, we're gonna be working with a new element in CSS3 that I find to be one of the most fun to work with. And it's also one of the most visually striking and that is 3D transforms. We're gonna be making a cube that's in 3D that can be rotated and we're gonna use it to display six images. I'll see you in the last project.